Today we're making the best meatloaf you've ever had, barbecue style and smoked on a pellet grill. In order to make the best barbecue meatloaf, we need to start with the best ingredients. Most meatloaf recipes are gonna call for chopped onions, but I think onions taste better when you saute them. Start off by finely dicing your onions. Get your stovetop turned on to medium heat and drizzle some olive oil in the pan. Once the oil is preheated in the pan, we're gonna throw in our diced onions. Give those onions a good mix in in their little oil bath and then sprinkle them with a little bit of kosher salt. Now we'll turn our heat to medium low and stir occasionally until they look nice and pretty like you see in my pan. While the onions are cooling off, we can prepare our other ingredients. Measure out one cup of milk and you know, maybe try a little bit if you want. Then add in three quarters of a cup of breadcrumbs. We're gonna stir this mixture for about 15 seconds and then let it sit for around three minutes until it thickens up. It should look like this when you are done. Do not let it sit any longer at this point. It will only continue to get harder, so make sure you have all of your other ingredients ready to go. Today, we'll be using some Wagyu ground beef that I found at the store. If you can't find anything like this, 80-20 ground beef or chuck will do just fine. To a mixing bowl, we're gonna add in two pounds of our ground beef, followed by the milk mixture that we just made. Next up, we're gonna add in half a cup of our delicious barbecue sauce. I personally love Smokehouse Charred Ends barbecue sauce, but feel free to use whatever your favorite sauce is. One beaten egg, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, our cooled sauteed onions, followed by a good teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of parsley. And for all of my comment trollers, yes, I'll be wearing gloves today. When we mix the ingredients together, we wanna make sure everything gets well incorporated so our meatloaf is consistent. However, over mixing will cause the meat to become tough when we are cooking it. So my trick is to stop mixing when I can't really single out any ingredient anymore. It'll just look like a big blob. Then we have to rip off two sheets of this evil, annoying cling wrap so we can line our loaf pan. I'm using an eight x five loaf pan and it fits perfectly for this recipe. I lay one sheet long ways and kind of tuck it in around all the sides. And then I lay in another sheet going the opposite way. And again, tuck that one in along all the sides. This will help us remove our loaf carefully later on. Now take your meat blob and dump it into that loaf pan. Our goal now is to form the meatloaf. A lot of people will say not to press too hard here because it can make the loaf tough, but I haven't really seemed to have any problems with that. And I'm not punching the loaf either, obviously, but I am gonna keep pressing down on the loaf to make the top layer even. If your loaf is not pressed together well enough, when you take it out of the wrap later on, it'll fall apart. And to help our loaf stay formed, we're gonna place it in the freezer for about 30 minutes to an hour. For our meatloaf, we'll be using Holy Cow Seasoning from Meat Church. Before we remove the meat from this loaf pan, we're gonna lay down a nice coat of seasoning. Flip the loaf upside down onto a wire rack and carefully lift up on the pan. The loaf will keep its shape very well since it had some time to harden up in the freezer. Our final and last step is to apply seasoning on every single side of the meatloaf. I don't have any better way than to just carefully lift up on the pan and kind of apply seasoning the best that you can on all four sides. If y'all have an easier way, please let me know down below in the comments. What's up you guys? Welcome back to my garage for the third video in a row because it is raining today again. I planned what I'm gonna film like weeks in advance so I can't really just wait till there's a nice day. I just gotta roll with it. But today we're in my garage making this smoked barbecue meatloaf. We're gonna turn up our smoker to 200 degrees for that low setting, that extreme smoke mode. And we're gonna be using Hickory Pellets by Bear Mountain Barbecue. Since we are using a pellet grill, it is imperative that that we use this extreme smoke mode because pellet grills do not produce the same great smoky flavor that offsets or what Weber kettles do. So we really need to blast it with that smoke in the first hour of the cook because you guys all know, you know, meat at a certain point will stop absorbing smoke once that bark starts to be formed. So it's really important while we got that raw meat on there that we got it heavy smoke. So let's go ahead and open up our rec tech. We are just gonna take this rack here how it is set it on there we're not going to use that pan because we want the smoke to come underneath and penetrate this meatloaf so that's all we got right now shut this down and i'll see you at the one hour mark we are now at the one hour mark on this barbecue smoked meatloaf we are now going to take it off of that extreme smoke setting we're going to turn it up to 250 degrees this is a low enough temperature to where we will still be able to suck in a lot of smoke cook this low and slow which will keep it nice and moist but it'll be fast enough that we should still only be about three to four hours out from finishing so we're not sitting out here all day 
waiting for our meatloaf. So let's go ahead and open up our smoker. We have a nice little bit of smoke coming out here and I just wanna show you guys how moist and jiggly this is. That little mixture that we made of all of the milk and the breadcrumbs is really gonna be amazing in here. This is gonna be nice, spongy, moist, amazing meatloaf. If you guys can see, when I press into this, a little bit of juices are coming out. So let's go ahead, we're gonna shut this down and I'm gonna come back out in about one more hour just to take a peek at it. We are now at the two hour mark on this smoked barbecue meatloaf. I already took a look at it and let me tell you, it looks absolutely insane. We're starting to form a good bark. So I wanna open up and show you guys what I've already seen and I wanna get a temperature check. All right, we're opening up our smoker and take a look at what we got going on here. Get a nice little temperature check. We're pushing right around 134 degrees, so it won't be too long before we're done. Oh, look at that. Look at when I press, the juices come out. This Wagyu meat is holding up real nice together. Starting to get some good bark action going on. I feel that pepper starting to kind of crisp up. Let's get this shut down, and I'll be back out here in a little bit to check on the temperature. All right, you guys, we are three hours into this smoked barbecue meatloaf. Let's go ahead and open up our smoker and see what we're working with. We're going to go ahead and see what our internal temperature is. Look at that, right where I want it, 161 degrees, 162. Right on this side, it's a little hotter, 165. Looks like that side's colder, 158. This meatloaf is gonna be great. We're gonna go inside, let this rest for 15 minutes, and then we'll slice in. What's up, you guys? Welcome to the favorite part of my video where I actually get to eat and try the thing that I've created. So without further ado, let's slice into this smoke barbecue meatloaf and guys take a look at how tender and juicy this meatloaf is look at the smoke ring on here wow these are some incredibly beautiful slices that are coming off and it's held up enough to not crumble guys let's dig in all right so here we go i got some slices on the table i'm just gonna rip off a chunk and oh it's just so tender I, i'm i'm done let's, let's eat mm. Mm. Oh my gosh. I have had many meatloafs in my life and this is by far hands down the best meatloaf I have ever had and I think there's a few reasons why reason one I tend to lean more towards liking barbecue sauces than I do like ketchup based stuff even though I know barbecue sauce is a ketchup based product however it has a lot of other seasonings and spices in it that add a more unique flavor two it's in a lot of smoke so this was in sitting in smoke this is like a smoky barbecue sauce that I use so it has a lot of that smoke flavor and using that wagyu ground beef the, the bites that I'm taking are almost like melt in your mouth. I do think I noticed a difference having the Italian breadcrumbs in there and it has some parsley. So there is a little bit of those tones in there that you get that are just that a little bit of that, like, you know, that Italian style flavor when you use like an Italian seasoning, but you pair that with the creaminess and the richness of the milk. And then you have just that smokiness. You have the Worcestershire, the barbecue sauce. You have that rub on there, the bark, the smoke. I promise you if you make this for your family and for your friends this will be a meal that is requested probably very often around holidays you could tweak this up make it however you want you don't have to follow this to a t you could change out the ingredients you could use ketchup instead of barbecue sauce you could do this in the oven you could do whatever you want with this if you want to learn how to make another great childhood favorite type meal that is smoked you can click this video right here and as always have a great day night whatever time it is when you found this video and i will see you guys in my next barbecue meatloaf adventure creation